All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question, pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So for this one, we're going to remove the 4 by multiplying it by the 9, and we'll have x squared minus 12x plus 36, and then you're going to replace it. So you're going to have 4x minus 6 times 4x minus 6. These will divide by 2, so you'll have 2x minus 3, and then you'll have 2x minus 3 again. So you'll write your answer as 2x minus 3 squared, and that would be your answer for the factory. For the math knowledge question, a dog eats 7 cans of food in 3 days. At this rate, how many cans of food does he eat in 3 plus D days? Well, in these first 3 days, he's going to eat 7 cans of food. And then each day after, he's going to eat 7 thirds of a can of food. Okay, so to figure out how much he needs for D days, this is for one day. So to figure it out for two days, you'd multiply it by two or times three or however many days. So you would just do seven over three times the number of days. And so your answer would be E here. Okay, so we are looking at lesson 91 today. We are looking at introduction to trig identities. So hopefully after this lesson, you'll understand your trig identities. There are two that we are going to focus on this year. Next year, whenever we do pre-cal, we're going to have a lot more um, to do with trig identities. But this year, all we're going to really focus on are these two. You need to learn them. These are the most commonly used trig identities. Tangent is sine over cosine. So the tangent of an angle is the sine of that angle over the cosine of that angle. And so sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. That is the other trig identity. You need to learn both of those. So write them down, highlight them, star them, put them on note cards, whatever you need to do to memorize them. Okay, so sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So we want to find cosine of theta if the sine of theta equals 0 0.4. So the identity that we're going to use is the one that related sine and cosine, which was sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now they told us that the sine of theta was 0 0.4. So sine of theta squared and then plus cosine squared equals 1. So 0.4 squared is 0 0.16. And then if you solve that for cosine squared, you're going to have 0 0.84. And so then, we're looking for the cosine of theta. So to find the cosine of theta, you'll take the square root. The square root of cosine squared is cosine of theta. And then the square root of 0.84 is 0 0.92. And so that would be your answer. Okay. Looking at the next one, we're actually going to fill in this chart here. We want to write it in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. And so you can look in the book on page 596, and it outlines the relationship. Well, sine in terms of sine is just going to be sine. Cosine in terms of cosine is just going to be cosine. Tangent in terms of tangent is just going to be tangent. Okay, and so you can see those in the book. Those three are like that. Now for the other ones, for sine in terms of cosine, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if we're solving for sine, then we want it in terms of cosine. Sine squared would be 1 minus cosine squared. And then to solve for sine, you would just take the square root of both sides. And so sine would equal the square root of 1 minus cosine squared. Okay? For the cosine in terms of sine, we would use the same concept. So we would have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And then we're going to solve for cosine squared theta. So we're going to have 1 minus sine squared theta. And then to solve for cosine, you would just take the square root of both sides. 
So the cosine of theta would be the square root of 1 minus sine squared of theta. Okay, so that would be those two. Next, we're going to do the sine in terms of tangent. And no, we're going to do the tangent in terms of sine and cosine. We're going to go ahead and do these two. So the tangent of theta, if you look back, is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. And so we want it only in terms of sine. Well, we know that cosine is the same thing as the square root of 1 minus sine squared. So we can write, instead of sine over cosine, we can say the sine of theta over the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay, and then likewise for this one in terms of cosine, we can write cosine in our denominator, and then instead of sine, we know that sine equals the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. And so that would be for those two. Now for the sine in terms of tangent and the cosine in terms of tangent, I'm going to need a little bit more room to write those. All right, so for putting them in terms of tangent, this one is a little bit more advanced, and so I'm going to go through it, and y'all may need to replay it a couple of times so that you can kind of see the concept of it. We're going to start with the sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And then we're going to make, instead of a sine or a cosine, we want to get it in terms of tangent. So tangent is sine over cosine. So I have a sine squared, and so I can make it over cosine squared. And if I divide it by cosine squared, I've got to divide the other two terms by cosine squared. Okay, so sine squared over cosine squared is going to be tangent squared of theta. And then cosine squared over cosine squared is 1, and then I have equals 1 over the cosine squared theta. Now I want to solve for cosine squared theta. So the easiest way to do that is to cross multiply. So I'm going to put this over 1. And so I'm going to have 1 times 1. And then I'm going to have cosine squared theta times the tangent squared theta plus 1. And all of that's going to equal 1. So then I can divide by the tangent squared theta plus 1 on both sides. And so that'll make it where I have cosine of squared, uh, cosine squared theta equals 1 over tangent squared theta plus 1. Now to solve for cosine, I can take the square root of both sides. Okay, and so the square root of cosine squared would be just cosine on this one. The square root of 1 is a 1. And then we don't know what the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1 is, so we're just going to leave it as tangent squared theta plus 1. And so that's what cosine is in terms of tangent. And so I can go ahead and put that here. 1 over the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. So that's for this one. Now for sine. We know that the tangent of theta is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So if I wanted to solve for sine, I just multiply by cosine. And so the sine of theta would be the tangent of theta and then times the cosine of theta. Well, we figured out that the cosine of theta was 1 over the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. And so if we multiply these two together, we're just going to get the tangent of theta and then over the square root of tangent squared theta plus 1. And so that would be how you would put those in terms of tangent. Okay? So like I said, those two, um, those are a little bit 
harder than the other seven, but you want to understand how all of those came about. So if y'all need to, go back and re-listen to the video and watch it again for those two. All right, so looking at this example, James is observing the launch of a rocket as shown in the diagram. He is two miles away from the launch pad. So that means that this distance here is two. What is the ratio of the rocket's distance from the launch pad to the rocket's distance from James when it has traveled one mile vertically? So we need to figure out what is the distance here? Well, you would use Pythagorean theorem. You'd say one squared plus two squared equals D squared. And so if you solve, your distance is the square root of five. So the ratio of the distance from the launch pad, that would be a one. And then to the distance from James. Well, the distance from James is the square root of five. And so we have one over square root of five. And so if you multiply that by the square root of five over the square root of five, to rationalize it, you get the square root of five over five. And so that would be the ratio of the distances they ask for. Okay, so now we're going to look at some practice problems. We're going to do A and C. Part B we did whenever we did our table, so we're going to skip that one. So y'all go ahead and try A and C by yourself and then unpause the video and I'll show you the correct answers. So we have sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. They told us that sine squared was 0 0.67. So we don't have to square this because they said sine squared is that. So this sine squared is 0.67. And then plus the cosine squared theta equals 1. So if you subtract, cosine squared is going to equal 0 0.33. And so then you're going to take the square root of both sides to get your cosine. And so the cosine of theta is going to be 0 0.57. Okay? So that's how that would work. Looking at part C. Ruby is twice as far from Becky as she is from Ivan. So I'm going to make that a 1. And so if this length is a 1, she's twice as far from Becky, so that'd be a length of 2. And it wants to know what's the ratio of Ivan's distance from Becky to Ruby's distance from Becky. Well, first we've got to use Pythagorean theorem to figure out what our x value is. So 1 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. So 1 plus x squared equals 4. So x squared equals 3. So that means that x is the square root of 3. So the approximate ratio of Ivan's distance from Becky, that's the square root of 3. And then Ruby's distance from Becky is a 2. But it's at approximately. So you would divide those out and you'd get 0.8. Seven. Okay, if you left it as a square root of 3 over 2, that'd be fine with me, but it did say approximate, so you would just go ahead and divide them out. Alright, so this is the challenge question. You want to prove the identity. We will deal with these a lot next year in pre-cal. Um, if you can figure that out now, that's pretty awesome, um, but it's okay if you can't. So y'all try and figure it out. You'll take a couple minutes and then y'all can unpause the video and I'll show you how we know that they actually do equal each other. All right, so sine squared plus cosine, no, sine plus cosine squared, we need to actually distribute that. So we're gonna have sine of theta plus cosine of theta times sine of theta plus cosine of theta. And then same thing with the sine of theta minus the cosine of theta squared. We're gonna have sine of theta minus the cosine of theta and then sine of theta minus the cosine of theta. And so we're going to distribute. So sine times sine is going to be sine squared theta. Then we're going to have sine times cosine. So plus sine theta times cosine of theta. Then we're going to have cosine times sine. So cosine theta plus sine, not plus, times sine of theta. And then we have cosine times cosine, so that's cosine squared theta. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Sine times sine is going to be sine squared of theta. Then we have sine minus cosine, I mean times a negative cosine, so minus sine of theta 
cosine of theta. Then we have negative cosine times sine. So I'm going to come on to the second line. Negative cosine theta times sine of theta. And we have negative cosine times negative cosine. So that's a positive cosine squared theta. Okay? So I have sine theta plus cosine theta. And then I, I mean sine theta, cosine theta. And then I have a negative sine theta, cosine theta. So those two terms will cancel. Then I have a cosine of theta, sine of theta, and a negative cosine of theta, sine of theta. So those two terms will cancel. So I can write sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Now, if you remember, one of your identities says that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And then we have another sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. That equals 1. So 1 plus 1 is a 2. And so that's how you prove that identity. So if you got that, that's pretty awesome. Um, if not, it's okay. We are going to do those more next year. Okay, so your homework for tonight is 1 through 30. So make sure that you do those so that we can go over any questions you have tomorrow.